uh, officially, we can kickstart the Axe After Show Episode 3. Um, I want to welcome everybody. Today is a great day. GM, um, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Today, we're going to be talking all things Killer Whales and dive into what went down in Episode 3, which was the crypto gaming special of Killer Whales. We've got the Hello Labs producer team here with Paul, Sander, Vince. Uh, we've got the three projects from the episode on the spaces with us today. We'd love to introduce Phantom Galaxies, Network, and Splinterlands. And we also have our incredible Killer Whales judges, obviously, Allcoin Daily. Uh, we've got Wendy O coming. We've got, um, uh, I think, Illa's here as well. We've got to get Illa up here. And I think I see Ryan in the crowd. We'll, we'll take a look and get him up here as well. Um, before we dive into this very, very juicy topic of crypto gaming, um, I would love to hear from the show's exec producer, Paul Castellan. What was it about crypto gaming that prompted you to produce an entire episode catered to this narrative? Thanks, Nosh. I think for as long as I've been in this space, crypto and gaming has always seemed like a perfect marriage. And I think as we... Everyone's looking for that one game that's going to break through and become a household name and then with it bring a whole kind of new wave of crypto adoption um, along with it as well. So uh, what we set out to on the show was to find that game and I think we've got some really great promising uh, projects that are on the space now that did really well on the on the episode and uh, yeah, the future will tell whether they can kind of succeed and fulfill their potential. But yeah, it just felt like a really good episode to kind of blend together crypto and gaming. Um, so yeah, for anyone who hasn't watched it yet, you can watch it with a tv.hello.1 with the hello token. So it's a jam-packed episode with five projects on there. It's definitely worth a watch. Things get real in episode three. Things get real. They sure do. It, it's it's really really awesome episode, and we're gonna we're gonna talk all about that. Um, yeah, so I, I want to take it over to our exec producer Sander next. Um, there's some really strong projects on this episode, obviously, uh, just absolutely incredible different sorts of gaming crypto projects. Can you tell us what the producers look for when choosing projects to make the cut for the show? Hey, Nosh. Good evening, GM. GM, everybody. Thank you for having me again on the on the space. Yeah, it's, it's an excellent question. I think that for most people that have been in the space for a couple of years now, they remember that the 2021 bull run was already around the gaming narrative. So when we opened up the search together with CoinMarketCap and you know the, 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 the wills, we, we were very hopeful that there would be a couple of very cool projects to uh, appear on the show. And, you know, we were su surprised by the quality of the projects that were coming onto the show and applying to be there. But, you know, what made us decide on the projects that you see on episode three of Killer Whales is basically um, we, we are searching for projects and teams that are executing on their promise. They are able to build a game in, in, this, in this instance that addresses a big community, so people that want to play a game, that want to experience how you can really use Web3 as a backbone technology to do something that, you know, a lot of us have been doing in the past or are still doing actively, and that's playing games. Um, so what you will find with the projects that are on the show, they all have very engaging games. They have different types of games, so for anybody uh, in the space, there is a game to play. Uh, but, it, but they also try to make an effort of making it very easy to onboard Web2 people. Um, and with that, making uh, a next step in towards adoption, mainstream adoption of the Web3 space. So, yeah, you'll be seeing that on, the, on season, uh, season one, this episode, but that's also definitely what we're searching for. These projects that just have, have, a, have a big reach and uh, really are executing and also making sure that uh, whoever is watching at home that doesn't understand crypto or Web3 can still be onboarded and start playing these games. Absolutely love that, Sander. And these are the, the the echelon of some of the best crypto projects, gaming projects that we have in the space. And, you know, we choose the best, you know, at Killer Whales, I think that if you look at episode three, you just see the, the versatility and the sort of difference in how these different projects approach um, market fit and also how they have a different sort of story and background and where they started and where they ended up in the space. Um, I want to move over to the whales, actually. You know, we've got this incredible theme going on with crypto gaming, an extremely hyped narrative in Web3. Uh, we've seen that blow up over especially the past year, even though it's been um, just expanding over, over the past couple of years. Um, 
But P2E models and decentralized game economies are very early concepts, very foreign concepts for a majority of gamers. And I think a lot of the listeners and people can relate to that who are not in crypto. So I want to just pass this up to some of the whales. Uh, we've got Alcoin Daily, we've got Illa up here. Um, and, and you know, just what do you guys think of that? How do you guys see the space develop in the coming years? Where do you think it's going? What's up? Come up on stage. The floor is yours. Yeah. I'll, I'll jump in. Hey, this is Aaron from Altcoin Daily. Austin also up here with his personal account. Like Sandra was saying, crypto, I mean, crypto gaming, I think such a natural fit, right? When we think of online communities and knowing that the world is only trending more digital, you know, from the very beginning in the internet, whether it's, you know, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, um, Minecraft, Fortnite, whatever it is, like, it's such a natural community that develops around these games. And you know, as you think, like, the world gets more digital, it's like, why wouldn't you want that to happen with your Mario games, where you're collecting coins anyway? Why wouldn't you actually want to to keep the items? And so far, in, in crypto land, like, what are the successful games we've had? I mean, there have been some, I guess, maybe the first time I ever heard somebody talk about, oh, a crypto game. Well, I guess there was Satoshi Dice back in the day, which was a very basic gambling. But then in 2017, there was Crypto Kitties. People called that a game. There wasn't much of a game there. And then in 2021 is when we really saw crypto gaming really blow up. And, you know, the, the main one at that time was Axie Infinity. But now, you know, there was some problems with Axie Infinity because once the subsidies ran out, once the rewards ran out, the users dried up. And, you know, on top of that, you know, why not make this, you know, triple A games? Why not get some bigger games? And also, you know, there's been other successful, you know, card games, Splinterlands on the show, Gods Unchained. Um, but, you know, to me, I think, like, gaming is the perfect avenue in crypto that'll bring millions of people in one good game that has nothing to do with what the the Fed is doing this quarter or if Bitcoin's price is up or down. Now, that's a, that's a very powerful take. I totally agree. Being someone who grew up literally playing World of Warcraft, like, I could not relate more to that. I'm sure a lot of people in the crowd as well. Um, yeah, just owning in-game assets and having this economy be something that can, you know, be something where people can earn and they can literally play the games that they love. Um, it's just reshaping everything and disrupting the space. So, um, Ella, how's it going? What, what's up? You're on the speaker panel. How, how are you feeling today? What's going on? Bonjour, bonjour. I'm joining y'all from... Uh... NFT pair or oh, from Paris is no longer NFT pairs. So um yes, yeah, late night here, but had to jump in and loving the conversation. Definitely gotta echo what um I think it was Austin or was Aaron just speaking. I didn't hear. I think Aaron. Oh, yes. well, echo what Aaron was saying. What's up to my, my favorite twins in the space? Um Yeah, I mean to me it's a no brainer crypto gaming. Like, if we have to understand that the creator economies are, are like, really the future of, of every space. And for, for gamers to actually be able to own their assets is a no-brainer. Like, my daughter plays Roblox, uh, Robo, Ro, Bo, Roblox, and I've spent so much Robux that I had to invest in Roblox to try to get some of my damn money back. But, you know, all these are walled gardens, so... When you think about the future of the space, it's like we're building it for, for that generation. There's for the future generations because that's the world they're already growing up in. They already have their own metaverses. They already get out of school and they go online and continue that, that, that social hierarchy and interaction inside of these wall gardens and inside of these metaverses like, like Roblox. So I think it's, it's the future of the space and I think that it's just going to be a perfect match for them to come in and own their own assets. And it's to me, it's laughable right now that the media and a lot of gamers say, "Oh, it doesn't." Gamers hate um, NFTs or gamers hate crypto, and it's like, no, they just they're just following a narrative that's pushed onto them by the by the mainstream media. Why that happens, who, who knows? But as soon as their their favorite players and favorite gamers really understand what's going on here, it's going to be a, a complete shift. You know, it's a Trojan horse. That's why. I'm super proud that, you know, with Dookie Dash, the game we're building, that we built at Yuga Labs, we partnered with Face Way, who's one of the biggest gamers in the world, and had him out in Paris, and he's, like, super addicted to Dookie Dash. He has his own avatar and his own bike that he, now he gets to do, like, an amazing rev share and, and, and spread that out to his fan base. So it's just, the, to me, it's the future of the space, and I'm excited for it. So I was really really keen to be on this episode with crypto gaming 
And also, uh, just to jump back in, you know, as any crypto gaming user will say, there's a big rift between the promise of gaming and some of the games out there today. I mean, a lot of times the problem is the people don't come from gaming. You know, the devs don't know what it's like to build a fun game. There's no stickiness to the game. There's rugs. There's hacks. There's a loss of community in the bear market. There's a loss of reward subsidies like I talked about. So, you know, that was part of the fun of this episode, really getting down to it. What makes it like what makes you different from all the mediocre games we've seen? You know, and that is an excellent segue. Um, Ninja, I, I saw your hand come up for a second. Thank you, my man. I want to get you up here in a bit. We're, we're going to go over the projects real quick, and then uh, we're going to come back to Ninja. Because I think that we, we have to get into the meat and potatoes, guys. We've got some incredible projects up here. Um, ben, ben Lee over here with Phantom Galaxies built an absolutely incredible MMO. And uh, anyone that likes MMOs is going to absolutely love what Ben has to say. Um, ben, first of all, Hey, how's it going? Um, can you tell us a little bit about Phantom Galaxies for our listeners who aren't familiar with your game and a little bit about yourself? Yeah, DM, DM, everybody. Um, thank you. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's exciting to be back. I don't know if everyone knows when it was all when the show was recorded, but it's um, yeah, it's been an exciting time since then. So yeah, I'm from I'm Ben Lee from uh, Phantom Galaxies from Blowfish Studios. Uh, co-founder, managing director, and um, project founder for Phantom Galaxies. It's a it's our like mecha mecha in space uh, MMO where you're flying around piloting your pilot. You fly around transforming robots, um, taking on aliens and other you know, space pirates. Essentially, getting to, to level up and, and you know, find loot and you know, all the cool weapons um, for your for your robot. So it's you know, growing up, I was in, I loved watching like Macross, Robotech, uh, you know, Transformers, Gundam, and so that was kind of my you know, our inspiration for the game. You know, been working on it for many years. Uh, we actually launched Phantom Galaxies onto the Steam and Epic Game Store back in November last year. So actually, you know, doing what doing what we, we said we were going to do, and like, like everyone's saying here, bring it bring it to the masses. Um, and, yeah, it's been uh, very exciting. I mean, we had some technical issues at launch, uh, purely around the fact that we had quite a number of, of people on Steam trying to download and, and, and play the game. So surprisingly, though, we had a majority of the players were from China, which was unexpected for us. Um it's unexpected also in that we didn't have the uh, Chinese localization in the game. And so that, that how many users, how many users do you have now? Cause I remember on the show, even though you got unanimous swims, mm -hmm. it seemed like a lot of great parts of your project. There were only 2000 people playing at the time. Yeah. Yeah. That was back in our, our, our closed beta. So since launch, we've had, uh, was it over a hundred and, Right now, about uh, 165,000 downloads on across Steam and, and Epic Game Store. Still, still getting right now about 700 downloads a day. Uh, we do have some, even though crypto has been going well, we've had some issues with with our in-game utility token Astrofa, which uh, you know is part of the, uh, the larger Animoca group. Uh, we're trying to sort those things out. Uh, and then the other part is with the game. We, you know, we. It's like we all said. Technically, there's a lot of challenges with the whole Web two, Web three space, but we're we're really meeting those. Um, and now we're really focused on on the game itself through the re retention. So we haven't been able to achieve like the retention metrics that that, that we need that we're after. And that's a, that's kind of a big kind of um, yeah thing that uh, an item that we're working towards right now. Um, so I think that's that's one of the look when you're going in, um, how how much how much of a challenge it is to mix Web two and Web three, and it's still challenging. I think it's great that that crypto is back, right? Uh, but yeah, speaking to that, like we were talking about, like uh, P2E games and then rules running out. The one thing that that we've seen with with crypto coming back is the rise of P2E again and and the rewards because you know. People, people in crypto space, you know, we're here to we're here to make a buck as well, and so that that has brought the attention back to kind of P two E games, which I think is something that we just have to, to, to work through. And you know, so for us, I think we're still in that in that build phase. Um, but if we've looked at all the previous cycles, we we wait 
for like, I'm extremely happy, <laughs> you know, Bitcoin and, and ETH is back. So we just need to wait until that now spreads out to, to the rest of the ecosystem. Hey, Wendy. Hey, Wendy. On the on the show, even though you gave this project a swim, you said you wanted him to be more aggressive. You you needed him to be more aggressive. He's sounding more aggressive to me. I like the confidence. It makes me excited and happy. I think anybody that is representing anything, whether it's your own project, yourself, or maybe just a delicious granola yogurt, you have to be aggressive. You have to put yourself out there. So I'm very, very excited about this. Thank you all. It was, it was, it was amazing seeing you all and being part of that show. It was, uh, I think we, we all had fun there. Uh, yeah, aggressive. I think the winter has definitely you know, made us more aggressive and now coming back. We're, we're back to fighting, fighting again for every bit of attention we can get. You're proving it with the results. You're proving it with the results, it sounds like. Yeah, no, thank you. And yes, but we have to do better. We, we've got to, like you said, that, that breakout game, we are far from that yet. Um, you know, we, we want to get to the, to the millions of, of players, and that's, that's, that's where we have to get to, to, to really prove to the world. And look, when we, when we launched, we definitely, uh, people know launching on Steam, we launched as free-to-play there. And uh, even when you launch as, as a normal traditional free to play game, there's there's an a phase, but the yeah it was we got pretty slammed by by the anti web three crowd there as well. But um, I think you know through the months we've gotten through that, and now we we see less of those people sticking their head up, and so now we do just have the the traditional gamers and the web three players gamers as well, just just downloading, playing, and 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 taking as it is. So that's that's really um, you know that's really good sign for us. That's incredible, Ben. Um, you know, we, we had a couple of questions for you. You pretty much covered so much of what, what I was going to ask you um, because seeing that the growth is absolutely phenomenal phenomenal for you guys from 2,000 users to 700 downloads a day and uh, just the success with, with uh, Steam as well. So um, congratulations. I'd love to hear that you guys are on the right trajectory, moving the way you want to. Um, I hope that it's an absolute massive success. I'm a, I'm a huge MMO man myself, so... Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm just going to bring you down, Ben. Uh, we're going we're gonna to bring up uh, the network team. We just have to rotate people in and out real quick. Um, just give me one second. And we've got network coming up right now um, with Michael Gatelli and Linus Chi. Um, we got, uh, I think, um, is it is it Linus? Linus is on the network account. How you doing, Linus? What's going on? I'm I'm gonna bring up um, Mike real quick as well. Linus, are you less nervous today? I hope. And for those who didn't watch episode three yet, they had a great pitch, but there was a little bit of nerves in the beginning. Which I know Wendy was very nervous too, because he was a good looking guy. Well, I think that they were nervous that you were going to massage um, their shoulders. Ayo, recent reference at Karate Combat this weekend had a little viral moment with the host. You know, the, the thing is with, with the team itself, um, whether there were nerves or not, we, we, we got to give it to them with the, with the side of their, their sort of professionalism that you guys came with. It was absolutely incredible to see you um, so passionately talk about your project and what you've been building for for a super long time. Um, do you guys want to kind of tell us a little bit more about what Network is and uh, how you guys came to be? Hi, yeah. First of all, thank thank you so much. And it's fun to hear you guys again because, yeah, as you said, we came really nervous. We didn't know what was going to happen. And, uh, you know, you got the judges and every, every, everybody in the team are so great, you know. Um, yeah, I even, uh, there was a, there's a moment that, you know, when you have makeup before uh, you, <clears throat> before, in which I didn't know, before they, sh they shoot you with a camera, uh, it's like, you don't want to be in the sun. So th there was this amazing, um, um, assistant for like actors and she was holding the umbrella for me and I was, I was like, can I hold it? And she was like, no, you're a talent. So I was like, it helped us feel better, you know, already before uh, the shooting. So yes, so thank you for that. And <clears throat> to introduce um, who we are, who we are, who we are, who we are, and uh, how it, it started. So sh short story long, um, me and Linus, uh, nine years ago, we met uh, in Norman School for VFX and um, I had a problem to operate the vending machine and there was this guy there, Linus, and he helped me. So uh, after that, we just sat together, we talked 
for like a long time about our visions that we w both want to create something you know spectacular that looks amazing for users uh creating a world creating you know this uh, stuff that got to do with like gaming and entertainment and then after um after three years i think uh or two years uh when i was doing my uh virtual reality already like company um i just called him and i was like yo man i remember you're a great concert artist and uh, would you like to come to my place and see what i'm doing and then that's kind of like how we start to work together so it was pretty spontaneous and um yeah so that, that's oh and about network I'm sorry and uh, network is a virtual reality metaverse we've been working on it for like i've been working on it for eight or nine years already um it's about it's about uh, we want to create like a hub for metaverses and to, to, to make that like People, uh, you know, will uh, be able to kind of like onboard through it. It will be easy for them because we're creating tools for them that they can uh, create with. We're creating uh, the blockchain part of it that is going to be, uh, you know, connected to different uh, blockchains, easily uh, accessible, and uh, most importantly, onboarding uh, players. But I'll talk about the play onboarding later when you guys are uh, probably going to ask me. And... Um, um, yeah, so we are proud of our creation engine because the tools of uh, creation that uh, we are developing and have been developing for a long time are basically taking the creation of uh, you know immersive uh, experiences like 3D games and uh, in VR or desktop and uh, you know interactive uh, visualization for architecture for like uh, training uh, you know employees for business uh, seamless. So basically. Uh, <clears throat> What we're working for such a long time is to make sure that the your, your user experience of creating something new will be so easy that even even somebody who doesn't have any any clue in like three D computers visualization will be able to you know use this uh, interface. It will easily take him uh, tell him what to do, guide guide him through. But most importantly, uh, the way of the creation is um, basically not by you know placing an item by item. Um, uh, necessary, but you can use templates uh, of games, templates of simulations, and it's not just like a template that you just use and everybody has the same template. The, the idea and uh, how it works is that uh, you know uh, it's generated like by by the program. So like let's say you wanna have uh, a piece of a city, so you take uh, the template. Okay, I wanna have a piece of a city. You're not like changing anything for now, and you go like. Okay, give me a you know a, a variation, and it's generating. So it's similar to generative AI, if you can say, with prompting, right? But we started like many many years ago, but it was just with like interface and settings, right? So now we did we are connecting also to prompting because it's uh, very convenient for people to be able to 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 t to tell the program like what to do. It it it, it uh, makes it way faster, right? Um, so, so this Mike? is like yeah. Mike, just to cut in, because I love the sound of this, but the big question I think on everyone's lips is, is anyone use, using it at the moment? How much, how many daily active users do you have? And, and kind of tell us more about like the, how it's sure. actually, is it successful at the moment? You're looking to build it out more? Like tell us about where you're at at the moment. Well, yeah, so first of all, we have like a dedicated community of, uh, I think uh, last note, there were the thousands of people that uh, got, uh, you know, lands and got uh, a big stake already in uh, in the metaverse from us, that, uh, you know, we communicate with them every day. They're excited. They're telling us what they want to be developed. And uh, especially we have a huge audience of uh, people that are ready to play when it is out, and which is awesome because, you know, we're building the community that actually want the game. Um, and, and kids too, right? Like you guys are, not, it's not just for adults. I remember Illa said something he liked was that, it needs to be easy, so easy kids can use it. And you said that that yes. is something that was your focus. Yes, but interesting enough, I, I must tell you something. After my kid is now playing Roblox and, uh, and Minecraft, I noticed that it's easier for kids <laughs> to create complex things that it is for us. So I guess it's not just for kids. It's also for, you know, for like, uh, you know, my wife, for example, she's all into fashion design and stuff. So she's like on, uh, on TikTok and she's on like Instagram. She's on all this stuff, right? But if you tell her now, Ellie, Listen, there's, there you go. We can use Roblox and create this amazing experience for like your fashion uh, line that people will be able to go into like 
the, a website and then like interact with your clothes. She would look at me and she'd be like, uh huh. <laughs> but with like, you know, with our interface and how our, you know, our system is generative. I mean, people like this also will be able to do. And there's a lot of people like this, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, you know what's similar to like uh, WordPress? Like before WordPress, like no way that, you know, like, uh, any mortal will create a website, you know, beside people that are really into it, you know. And then when uh, WordPress went out, basically, I feel like, I, I don't know, I don't know how many percent of the internet, I remember I checked, I think it was like 50 or like 45 percent of all websites in the internet is like WordPress, uh, WordPress based. So yeah, that's, that's kind of awesome, like, Mike. Hey, I'm so, I'm so sorry to cut you off, Mike. We're, we're a little bit short on time. We, we got I don't know, sorry. Yeah. For you. No, I love the excitement, man. I love the excitement. You're literally building, uh, you know, what, what's coming up is simplifying the process for creators and people to actually build these, these spaces. And I think that's phenomenal, man. Like to take out the guesswork in being able to 3D model and do all that stuff is amazing. It's incredible. Um, I, I, I think we, we basically, um, you know, want to ask you real quick before we move on what's next for network in a short simple sentence what do you guys have coming up um what, what's going on i'll try to say it in a simple sentence because i'm uh, you know I'm, I'm talking a lot so um yes so the next big thing that's coming in like three weeks we're releasing <clears throat> And AI alpha, which means that, uh, well, what did I talk about AI? Because we've developed this technology that allows the NPCs to use uh, generative AI, large, like, large language models. But instead of, like, using open AI or using another, like, company-ready solution, we actually, we actually, uh, we actually uh, developed our own, and the reason is because if you see how the OpenAI or ChatGPT is, it will st it will not stay in the character. Even if you prompt it to be in the character, it will still go out of the character. And for like an NPC, and in general for like a metaverse, we want to have actual slash slash beings, right? That they keep the character, right? So they. Uh, they have emotions. So we developed our own uh, language model, basically, which is pretty cool for us and we're releasing this in this alpha so people will be able to start interacting with those npcs and talk with them and like see how uh, you know see how human they how they work sorry to interrupt mike and i know we're about to move on but you know austin even though you gave this guy a swim you said one of the things that concerned you is will you get users and how many months have passed they're about to re release an alpha that's still a big question how are you feeling about this austin What's up, everybody? Austin, Altcoin Daily. I'll keep this quick. Um, I feel like this guy's a technical whiz. Man, the technicals that this guy's excited about, um, that is you know, one of the things that I was impressed with um, when you came on the show. I think it's a, it's a wait and see. I'm excited. I want to know if the game is fun. The cool thing, though, about crypto gaming, in my opinion, because we are so early and this is still an untapped niche in a sense, the revolution that non-fungible tokens could bring to gaming is that if one game wins, other games don't have to lose. So like if right. one game does get that mainstream adoption, I think that's going to bring up the space as people are discovering this nascent space. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good. The warm world. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, Mike, thank you so much for coming up. And guys, definitely check out these projects. The pinned tweets are up there. Uh, share them, like them, comment, retweet. We've got an amazing panel here today with just incredible whales, legends in the space, and these gaming projects that are building literally the future of our space. So, uh, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's get those likes up. Um, Mike, I'm going to rotate you off and the network team. Uh, thank you so much for coming up. And we're going to get um, Agrode up here from Splinterlands. Much awaited. And... Guys, this has been, I think for a lot of you, the moment you guys have been waiting for because our mentions have been absolutely blowing up with the Splinterlands team. I, I think I can speak for everyone on the Hello Labs team. Um, we don't know what it is, man. It's, it's the, the Raiders, the, the, the community from uh, Splinterlands has been pulling up. Um, Agro, I just sent you a request. If you get accepted, that would be awesome. And I'm just going to rotate a few more people off. There he is. All right. Well, welcome up on stage, Agrode. Um, you know, first off, hello. Tell us how you're doing. Um, you know, like talk to us about Splinterlands. What is it? Um, yeah, the, the floor is yours. I think we lost Agrode for a second. Um, 
it, this this happens, guys. This is the next spaces. Sometimes um, things rug. because they were my favorite project. I think I don't remember. Splinterlands has never gone down or rugged, unlike Agrod right now, as far as I know. I love it. I love it. Um, all right, Agrod, I'm going to bring you up one more time. I try coming up. Uh, if not, we'll we'll just move on from the topics and come back to you in a sec. Um. Let me see what's going on over here. Anyone Can I ask support? you a question? Yeah, absolutely. What did you eat for lunch? Oh, I actually had some delicious butter chicken. Yeah, that was, was good. That was good. What about you, Wendy? I ate some krill. Nom, 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 nom. Because I'm a killer whale. Hey, I lost audio for a second as soon as I switched to speaker. Sorry about that. It's all good. Welcome up, man. Um, how you doing? What's going on? I'm doing great. Um, you know, Splinterlands is off in, in making, um, like, we're doing a whole bunch of uh, rank reward changes and the way that the gameplay works, trying to go update that to be as inclusive to, to new players and new people in crypto as possible. Um, and we've actually done a spinoff. Um, so there's a whole separate company that's dedicated to bringing games that have been built in Web 2 into Web 3, so that all of these games that have hundreds of thousands of people and millions of downloads, we can easily onboard them into the next generation of crypto gaming. So there's kind of nonstop work, and my community is just thrilled with uh, all the killer whale stuff that's going on, and I get, I get a lot of tweets and messages and people just chatting in our Discord community about uh, how excited they were to have us on the show, how well produced the show looked. Um, they thought that you guys grilled me pretty hard, but they also thought that it looked authentic. And so. Oh, really? We grilled you? I thought we weren't easy on you, Agro. I, I, you know, I can. I'm just reporting. You know, I don't I don't have a uh, I don't have a personal uh, bias there. You know, I, I I've uh, I've worked in sales a lot. I got a graduate degree. I've certainly been grilled harder than by the whales, but. Um, I didn't the, yell at you, though. I yelled at a lot of other people, but I definitely didn't yell at you, and I didn't tell you to shut up either. Well, that's a win. I'm I'm grateful for that. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah. yeah. Speaking speaking of love, Agro, you you spoke about some pretty hefty numbers on the show, and I think that had everyone's jaws to the floor. Uh, that was absolutely incredible to consider. You know what you guys had, and c could you talk a little bit more about the game itself with with um, the, the, the card trading aspect of it, kind of for our users, a lot of people who aren't, you know, aware of what Splinterlands is, um, you know, love to love to get the word out. Yeah, so Splinterlands is a trading card game. It was built back in 2018 by me and my partner, Matt. Uh, I came with like a sales and community uh, development background. He came with a development and, and product manager background. And, um, you know, I kind of think of it like I'm there to deal with all the human-based life forms, and he's there to deal with all the silica chips. And between the two of us, we, we built this game. Um, and, it, you know, it was slow going, but in 2021, we had kind of our breakthrough moment, both because there was some wind at our back with a good um, altcoin season and Bitcoin growth, but also because we, we started our, uh, our governance token got out there. It's called Splinter Shards, and... Um, you know, it trades on a variety of exchanges and, you know, once that thing got out there and people really had the taste of ownership where they could not only earn rewards, but then determine where those rewards should go and how they should be distributed and how they can have an impact on the, the, the governance of the game and of the economy, uh, that went ballistic. So, you know, at the time in 2021, we had like 10,000 daily active players on our, on our like best day. Uh, maybe maybe it was even just 10,000 people overall. It's been a couple of years since I looked. But, um, yeah, we were just this tiny little thing floating along, and then 2021, we blew up. And, you know, by now, we've played something like 3.5 billion games. Um, you know, we've done a couple billion transactions uh, on-chain. You know, there's not a lot of games, products, or technologies in, in crypto that can handle billions of transactions, but uh, that's something we've managed to do. The... Um, you know, we've, we've rented, so you can, like, buy cards, but you don't have to be the person playing them, so you can rent the cards, um, and so we've done over 1 billion rentals for the cards, um, and, you know, there's just, there's a lot of community engagement, and, um, you know, the, 
that game continues to progress. We keep building new features. Uh, you know, there's there's land, and you can farm a bunch of different resources, and we're building a whole crafting ecosystem for that, too. So kind of like Minecraft-inspired, a little bit of a... Um, I don't know if people like civilization the game, but there's some civilization kind of manage your cities aspect to it as well. Um, so we're just we're building lots of different components to that. We have a very strong community, a, a pretty phenomenal technology stack that we that we live off of. And then, like I said, we're expanding to try to make it so that um, any game that's ever been built in Unity. So, like Unity is this big game engine development company. And something like thirty to forty percent of all apps in the, that are in the game stores have been built using using Unity. So if we can take those games that already exist and their users and their their ecosystems and everything and bring that into uh, Web three, I think it's going to be enormous. Not just for you know our our community or our company, but for like literally everybody in crypto because I think we can grow the pie uh, very quickly. So. Lots of development, lots of people, lots of community, uh, lots of gameplay tweaks, and um, and really a, a, an excited and energized crowd. Uh, I really think that the Spoilerlands community has been stoked to see this Killer Whales thing, uh, to see you guys be successful, and to see our game and our uh, community uh, be successful uh, as part of that show. So uh, glad you guys liked it. Thank you so much for that, Agro. It's it's great to see your success and you know how you guys are growing. It's been phenomenal, and your community is definitely one of the most tight knit ones we've seen. Um, literally, my mentions are still blowing up. Thanks for that. Uh, I just want to go over to Ninja real quick. Our co exec producer, uh, Vince Allen. Uh, Vince, what's up, man? How's it going? Hey, what's going on? What's going on? It's so glad to be here. Hey, real quick, just for efficiency, um, because we have our um, our creator, visionary, Paul, and also our CEO down there. Can you make me a co-host and also Altcoin Daily co-host, and then we can manage the stage and get those guys back up? I also see, uh, I think Yev, I saw Yev down there. Perfect. I just want to make sure we can get as much as our team on board. Um so yeah, that's always executive producing. Always executive. I, I mean, I, I got to. You know, it's in my blood. Somebody I can't needs help to it. tell you what to do, Aaron, because you're a wild card. You're completely out of control. <laughs> so we need some sort of direction here, and myself too. Absolutely love that. Well, welcome up, guys. Thank you so much, Ninja. I appreciate that. Um, and let's go. Let's go back over to uh, Agro real quick. Back to the, the meat and potatoes. Uh, to the whales, actually. What do you guys? What do you guys feel about you know uh, Splinterlands' growth and where they're going? Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. What, what's going through your mind? I want to start first. Um, so with Splinterlands, they've been around for such a long time. That's why I was so I was excited to have them come on. Um, I want to. Aggie, I forgot when you guys started the project, but I remember it back in the bear market of like 2018 ish. So I'm just excited to see them still here. They're very, they're very much so silently building, which is amazing. And again, the game is super easy. Um, it's something I could probably bring to my kid and she would understand how to use. But I, I think that what you guys are doing is awesome. I'm also not invested or any of those types of things for transparency from the audience. I have a, a, a question um, that was just on my mind um, for any one of the whales or projects. Since we're talking about gaming, um, where do you where do you guys see the um, the landscape moving forward this cycle? I mean, Bitcoin's pumping to fifty four thousand. We know that runs the crypto market. I'm just curious, anyone's thoughts? I think that I think back in 2021, before the space blew up into the bear market, negative wise. Uh, so b before the end of it. There was a lot of like mainstream Web2 companies, uh, gaming companies, that were about to pull the trigger and get into crypto, get a crypto game, make a component, uh, get a component of it in their games or, or just invest in new ones. Everything got put on hold when the market went down. The gamers uh, revolted. Um, and in this bear market, now that we have had time to build and people had a time to look from a distance, is this still wanted or could this still benefit? I think crypto gaming personally is coming back with a vengeance. I think the difference is it's going to be, I think most games are, at least when the mainstream comes in, I'm not talking about the games being built today by the Web3 people, crypto people, but from the outside, 
I think that a lot of games are just going to have a crypto component. It's going to be kind of put in the back end, and you won't necessarily even need to have a DeFi wallet, so to speak, to get in, although uh, you'll get more advantage if you do. But I think it's coming back with a vengeance bigger than 2021. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, I like the post that Tropo made today. I saw that Google released their AI that, you know, you can actually, it could actually make you like bait, like simple platforming games. <laughs> and he was crack. He was trolling people like, yeah, all y'all motherfuckers who, who w were like basically promoting games and you were just like vaporware. Now you can actually come to market with something so you don't get your ass jammed up and getting handcuffed. So, I think that you know, there's a lot of tools that are that are being built that people can actually utilize. And at the end of the day, there's there's no excuse for for vaporware. Like if you raised a, a ton of capital in this space, you need to deliver something. Like we're not we're not trying to hear that at all. No excuses. And then you know, I definitely got to give flowers to the teams that are actually shipping dope shit. Like Nifty Island is super fun. Like I really love that 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 game. I love that team. Um, there's another one that. That has like an extraction shooter. You got a shrapnel. Shrapnel, yeah, shrapnel. They shout out to the shrapnel team because they actually came into the space. They were sponsoring every single space for like two months straight, just to to, to raise awareness about their game. A lot, I know a lot of people, gamers that actually one of my guys, Bit Boy J, who's an OG ape. He's like super bullish on that game and he's not somebody who you can like buy because he's already made a boatload from being in crypto and DeFi. so and he's a full-on gamer and you know like there's a bunch of people that are that are on my head top to try to be in the yuga gaming council to try to to play the games and give feedback so there's a bunch of interest in the space and i also love that there's people like at nft paris ubisoft was there so there's also, you know, big companies are, are paying attention to the space. I'm hearing rumors about there's a, a token that's going to be in GTA. I don't know if that's people just blowing smoke or we'll see how that turns out. But at the end of the day, like the narrative was strong last cycle, but it was it was like tainted by vaporware. And I think this cycle, a lot of projects actually did raise funds and are actually building dope shit. So I feel like this cycle is going to be like a show and prove or even show and tell phase of the of the of this of um in the space with when it comes to crypto gaming. And I'm super excited about that because that narrative is much easier to, to tell who's bullshitting or not. It's as simple as is your game dope or isn't it dope? You don't have to do get a have like a degree in fucking rock like a damn rocket science degree to, to understand what people are talking about. Like it's very simple. Is the game fun or not? And uh, I just want to say in brief, I think the future of gaming is it's just going to get more and more social. You know, the same things people liked about RuneScape, League of Legends, World of Warcraft going, uh, growing up. Um, you know, nowadays you have 10, 20 friends in real life, but 100 friends online. And I just see gaming getting more and more social, just like content creation has just gotten so much easier to do versus 10 years ago. The, the filming is easier, the editing is easier, the uploading is easier. I think just being able to be social is just going to get so seamless and natural. And then it's up to really the games to be good games first, as you know, something brought up on the show multiple times and really have that stickiness in crypto. You know, it's just like, oh, it's easy to get users in 2021 in the in the bull. But can you keep them? And it's so hard for any crypto community well, when the token uh, economics, uh, you know, are, you know, could have problems and the token price drops and the communities at a loss. So props to, you know, games like Splinterlands because, uh, you know, they've been around multiple cycles. It's the same kind of thing with like Bored Apes, you know, their brand lasted in the bear market and, and they're still here. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. But I also think, too, like, I, I think tokenomics is going to be one of the big struggles that we are going to see um, with this upcoming cycle. Because let's face it, this is still a pretty, pretty brand new sector. And kind of navigating, you know, the tokenomics with a lot of the play to earn stuff is going to be very, very important. And I believe earlier, I think Circle had announced a partnership with a gaming company to do payouts to creators in USDC. So again, it's gonna be interesting to see how a lot of these gaming projects are able to, you know, still participate in the play to earn model. But what they do differently from last bear market to the one that we will probably be getting soon so that people still stay engaged. Because let's face it, if you're a play to earn um, game or you're, you know, offering those types of things um, and that we there's another bear market that happens, 
then that could definitely deter people. Plus, if the game, like, even though the game is fun, if you do promise play to earn, then you do have to kind of deal with that, especially during the bear. And just to piggyback off that, it's, you know, being able to keep those users in the bear. Like, you know, we talked around, and I kind of mentioned earlier, Axie Infinity subsidized their growth, or their rewards, rather, in the bull market, and tons of people got onboarded. Now, when those subsidies ran out, uh, the users dropped off. We had Mark Cuban on uh, a year or so ago, and, you know, he was a big Axie guy. We asked him, you know, how would you solve this? And, you know, one of the things he said is, why not bring in sponsors, Coca-Cola, whoever it is? They can have their advertising right in the game and help subsidize things. So whoever works that out, um, where you don't just, like, lose the rewards and, you know, really tank the tank the community in the bear market, they're going to they're gonna do big things. So one of the things that I see is that the uh, in the old world, it was sort of like play to earn versus free to play. And there were there was a lot of this talk about you know one being better than the other, but what I what I think is going to come is that these Web two games are going to stay Web two. You know there is a big population that has a backlash against Web three, so you want to be able to just maintain in Web two and have that free to play model. And in fact, it's a really good model to get people in. It doesn't always help you monetize a game or monetize a community or own your assets or have any influence in the game. So it's missing some components. But I think if you add Web3 on top of it, it gets really exciting because, you know, you could do it as an optional thing and add on. Not everybody has to do it. And if you do it that way, then the people that hate Web3, they can hate it and just stay in Web2. Uh, maybe at some point they'll they'll grow more customer, more used to it. But I, I think the future is going to be casting a big net using free to play and monetizing it and sort of giving governance and ownership with it via Web3 tools for the people that want it. I have a quick follow up question. Hide the wires. Yeah, no, and I have a quick question for, again, anyone um, that wants to, uh, wants to put their take on it because. I certainly have a lot of thoughts around it, being a gamer um, and being deeply invested in crypto gaming. Do, do you guys think that there's a new, you know, genre or, um, or group of, of gamers that's being born that are crypto gamers that are, are, are going to, they're, they're, they're not the Web 2 gamers. They're gonna, and maybe I missed this earlier because I was being rugged for about a couple minutes. Um, but that, you know, that are just, that are going to play this whole crypto game and the game, it, 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 that it's fun too, or, or any of those combinations. What do you guys think about that? Repeat the question. Basically, do you think that there's a new group of gamers that are being born within Crypto Web 3 that are not your Web 2 gamers that will be, be able to sustain, sustain the ecosystems of gaming in crypto? Yeah, and, definitely. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Go ahead. sorry. Go ahead, Wendy. No, I, I agree with you. I think that we will not agree with you because you asked a question. Um, but um, I do think that we are going to see a lot more um, Web3 gamers come into the place, in, into the place, into the space. My mind is in a million places. Because let's face it, it's fun. Like, crypto is a whole lot of fun. There's so many di different sectors. There's so much fun with it. Like, I know, for example, my daughter, my daughter's seven. She plays Robux because all her friends play it. And I told her, it's like, you know, this because she knows that mommy does... Um, crypto for work she calls me the queen of twitter i don't know why but it's freaking hilarious and she's seven okay so anyways um but she was i was telling her i was like baby i says you know that there's gonna be nfts on robux and she's like that's what you talk about at work mommy right i says yes i says you know it's a little token that lives on the blockchain and she's like so you get to play robux with me i said yes so she's super excited about the integration of web3 even though she has no idea what what that really means she just knows that mommy gets to play with her so i, I think we're going to see a lot more people kind of come in web regardless of if it's from web 2 or it's just us that are teaching our kids or our communities about it for me when i was growing up uh like to just to tie this in with like finance like when i was growing up i thought credit card like credit cards were normal um digital payments in that sense normal i had thought by the time i became aware that it had always existed but you know the generation before you know, that's when credit cards came into the system, yet it's just all I knew when I grew up. So I think the same thing's going to happen with gaming. Kids today are going to think it's more of a no-brainer, or it's just part of the culture, unlike our generation. Some absolutely incredible takes today, guys. Um, we are over time for today, so I just want to, you know, before we head off, um, I want to say thank you all for coming, you know, to the space and talking about something that's very early and nascent. As a lot of you mentioned, it's uh, crypto gaming, just developing 
like crazy, and hopefully we see a lot more adoption in this cycle. Uh, before we go, we'd love for you guys to go and like, retweet, and uh, the, with the pin post above, um, show some love. And thank you all for listeners for coming out today. Thank you to the judges for coming out today and talking to all of us and sharing your thoughts. And um, also, last of all, thank you to the projects, um, you know, for, for putting yourselves out there and building in a space that is hard, that is challenging, um, that does scrutinize you. It, it is always a tough job. So, uh, you know, you guys are you guys are killing it and hope to see you all succeed. I want to go over to Paul real quick. Um, you know, this episode three was incredible. Would you like to share with us a preview of what's going to be happening in the next episode of Killer Whales? And when can we expect it and where should we all go? Yeah, so we've just posted the trailer on Killer Whales TV for episode four, which is our digital security special. So this is like a really important one in the space. Like it's focusing on how you can kind of stay safe, kind of um, how you can, what wallets you should be using, what kind of digital security measures you should be using. And it's a very kind of, interesting one in terms of the back and forth with the judges as well so we got wendy o up there we've got all coin daily scaramucci mario nafal and yev from uh, the co-founder of hacking and it gets pretty kind of spicy with their back and forward with some of the projects on there as well so definitely worth a watch it premieres this thursday at 3 p.m gmt and uh, exclusively on hello tv and just a reminder as well is that the show is coming out for its mainstream launch on March 11th. We've already confirmed Apple TV uh, and Google Play. And we'll be making announcements over the next couple of days of a couple more um, platforms that the show is going to be live on. So it's just the start of this kind of killer whales, killer whales journey. And uh, yeah, we're excited to see what we've kind of done so far and where we're going to go from from this step on and into future seasons so yeah guys head over to tv.hello.one to watch the gaming episode and then pre-order the digital security episode which becomes available on thursday true and yeah security episode does kind of, does kind of sound dry initially but let me tell you there's some great moments uh, the back and forth between judges and contestants really exciting i think it's one of the best absolutely uh -huh. Yeah, but one of the one of the projects even even threatens to headbutt Mario, so I, that's just tuning in for just for that alone. Yeah, I actually had to break it up. It was pretty gnarly, and I, I promised that I wouldn't get any any type of altercations. But unfortunately, things got really hot, guys. And yeah, you gotta have to t tune in. Tune in if you want to see Wendy save the day. Um, and <laughs> and yeah, thank you so much, guys. Um, Definitely go check it out. Um, it, link is in the bio. Look forward to episode four. Thank you so much for all coming out today. And we'll see you on the next one.